So this is the setup we got today. Short video, nothing too exciting. We have a Husqvarna OEM 346XP cylinder, and I'm gonna do something very simple. I'm just gonna check squish on this one versus on the highway cylinder. Somebody posed the question, I won't say who, but the question was, what is the squish on the OEM versus the highway cylinder? And we're not talking about anything exciting here. I'm gonna use a gasket. We're gonna put this down just as anybody else would. These are not ported, these are not modified in any way. So we have an OEM bearing cap here on a, a Husky 3, uh, 350 chassis. And I'm going to use a base gasket and then just put this down and we're gonna measure the squish on both on the same chassis. By the way, if anybody wants to check out this t-shirt, the OPE forum, check it out, it's cool. Anyway, moving right along to this. OEM gasket, let's check this. I, I'm gonna guess it's about 18 thousandths, let's see. 19, close enough. 19 and a half maybe. That's pretty normal for these. 17, 18, 19, that's what I've seen for gaskets. Okay, put the gasket down. This is just a test fit, so I'm not using any sealers or anything on here. I just wanted to get a squish. Needle bearing. OEM wrist pin here. Put this in the correct direction. Not even going to use circlips because we're not running this. can't reiterate this enough, if you're going to put this down with sealer and all that stuff, you're going to want to check one thing. These bolts, the cylinder head bolts, do bottom out. So if they bottom out before they, they actually grab the flanges, then you're going to end up with an air leak because this thing is going to wobble. So before you put this down for a final, you got to check and make sure that these are not going to bottom out on you. There's no choice on that. You have to check it. Like I said, they, they do bottom out. So these are indeed too long. So they've bottomed and this moves. That's a no good. Not even gonna work for a test. Couple of options if they're too long. Number one, you can shorten them. Just cut them off. Depends on how much you need to have cut off. Second option, get shorter bolts. Third option, uh, use a few washers on the top. These are just M5 bolts. They're really nothing special, so Obviously, when you put them down, you're going to want to use some Loctite, but we're not doing that here. Good. Now that ain't rocking. Okay, let's check squish. I go into the sides, press it all the way to the side. Now this is some, actually some lead solder. It's quite flexy, so it's nice. So 25 thousandths and 9 is 34 thousandths stock. It's actually a pretty tight squish. For a stock, 
stock saw that's 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 tight let me just go to the other side here so 25 and 9 34 so 34 33 thousandths squish so if you have a 19 thousandths gasket, you do a bas gasket delete on this, you're going to be down to 15 thousandths. That's too tight. Can't do a gasket delete on this guy. Too tight. 34 thousandths, that's pretty tight stock. So, um, I think my X torque was somewhere around there. Stock, pretty tight. Um, I had the two, six, two XPs I've checked are 43, 44 thousandths. Anyway. Okay, that's that. Let's check the highway. Highway piston and wrist pin. I haven't done this one yet, but let's make a prediction. Forty thousandths. There's my prediction. If it's 60, I'll be disappointed. Just to make sure this still feels all right. One thing you don't want to do is you don't want to stick this down in there. It's already flattened, so you have to nip it off. Same process. Go to the side. Just from the look, let's see. I think it's 45 thousandths. 25 and 16. That's 41 thousandths. So that's pretty good. Not quite as tight as the OEM. Yeah. So 25 and 15 is 40, and then 1 is 41. Check the other side. So same exact measurement, 41 thousandths. So pretty good left to right. I'd say that's pretty good. That's consistent with anything else that, that is uh, out there. Um, again, the, some of the other saws, the 262 was 43, 44 thousandths stock. So I'm not really surprised at a 41 thousand. That'll generate plenty of compression stock, not going to be a problem. The, the issues show up at about 60 thousandths, then you have a too, too high of a squish and now you end up with a compression that's like 120. That's, that's not going to generate a lot of pop for you. So, <clears throat> to, to whoever asked the question, there you have the answer. Um, seems to be pretty good to me. So, um, and just for the record, this was sealed when I got it, so this the cylinder itself is uh, I do not believe was cherry picked so uh, and also for the record the Husqvarna cylinder was not sealed when I got it um, it did come from I believe a, a private party anyway just for comparison's sake here's the Kafar kit check the squish uh, 25 and 22 so that's 47 thousandths 50 minus 3 about 47,000 squish on the Kafar kit. So you need quite a bit of uh, removal there to get the squish close. So again, the Kafar kit, about 47,000 squish for that. Um, the confounder here is that this is an aftermarket riser, so not an OEM riser. It does have the OEM gasket though. So, 47 thousandths is stock for this. Again, just for comparison, this is the UK kit. Uh, nice thing about this is it actually comes with its own base gasket, its own muffler gasket, and its own needle bearing too. This is a fairly complete kit. It's nice. Um, I happen to be out of base gaskets, otherwise I'd use an OEM gasket here. Uh, I did measure the base gasket. It's about 20, 21 thousandths. The OEM gasket's about 19. So it's fairly comparable. Let's check the squish. So 
So the squish here is about 42 thousandths. So 25 and 15 and 2. 42. So, and if you had a tighter base gasket, then you'd be looking about a 40 thousand squish. So if you use an OEM base gasket, you get about a 40 thousand squish. So I think this kit, uh, at least the, the squish, seems to be fairly comparable in all the kits. The Kafar kit is the furthest off, but none of them are grossly out of spec. So it's at least interesting. Um, again, I've, I've got a aftermarket riser on this too, um, but even with that, with all those confounders, uh, it's not that far out of spec. So I find that at least interesting. So nice. It's nice to see that even the aftermarket stuff isn't too far out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get all of these ported. Um, I'm not going to. I'm not an expert on porting, so I'm not going to show all that stuff. But um, I'm going to get these ported, and I'm going to get these into saws so that they're running. And I'll bring them to to the Connecticut get together, uh, if at all possible. Uh, five different saws, roughly all to the same spec, and see if anybody can tell a difference. Thank you for watching. I hope this clears uh, some things up for some people, and don't forget to subscribe.